Welcome to the first episode of TKO. What is TKO? Technical knockout, <laughs> baby. Yeah, so it's Trey and Kevin here from HWP. We're going to talk about all things technical, and today's the first episode, and we're going to address something that's kind of been... Um, looming in the background. Yeah, looming is a good word, but uh, shipping and supply chain. Yep. So kind of where we are, where we're going, where we're headed, and things we can do to mitigate. Yeah. So it's definitely something that uh, it's impacting all of us uh, in more ways than we kind of realize, I would say. Uh, You know, obviously with TKO, we're here to talk about technical things, but supply chain is definitely an issue that supersedes and it goes beyond just the technical space. Yeah, it's everything. I mean, it's from clothing to food, automobiles, um, everything. Yeah. Um, I guess since we're talking about supply chain stuff, um, maybe the first thing we could talk about is I'm, ass- I'm going to assume that everyone knows what supply chain is. Let me just do a quick little high level recap. Yeah, what is supply chain? Supply chain is you have a, you have a product, you have a widget, you have a little something, right? And in order for you as the end user, you have to, you want to get access to that thing. So supply chain is the process in which the thing is manufactured, it's uh, tested, it's produced, people touch it, machines touch it, whatever. Um, it goes through a process of getting from, from a point of origination to your consumption. Yeah, it's a whole ecosystem. It's the whole process of getting it you know, made, farmed, whatever it is, all the way to your use. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're we're kind of going to address the top five things that that always come up, you know, mm-hmm. when we have customers that are placing orders, um, and they get a you know an order confirmation that shows some date, thirty to forty five days yeah. in the future. Um, so we're we're kind of going to address why we're why we're here. Right. So the first thing is shipping issues. I've got some bullet points here because there's no way I can remember all this, but um, I've I've compiles of different articles and stuff that we can talk about. Yeah. Um, but here's here's what's here's what's affecting us shipping wise. So I'm sure some of you have seen um, there are literally hundreds of container ships waiting to dock at various ports, whether that be Long Beach, California, Savannah, Georgia, Port Galveston. In, Port of New York. Yeah, everywhere. I mean there's hundreds of ships just sitting at sea waiting to dock. And they've been there for a while. Yeah. Some have been there for over 70 days yeah. from what this article said, yeah. which is crazy. Um, and then obviously, you know, when they dock, getting the containers off the ship has been an issue yep. because they're having staffing delays due yep. to COVID shortages. So, yep. you know, a lot of places are still at you know, 25, 30% employment capacity, social distancing and such. But I actually, I found this article today and I'm going to, I'm going to put it up on the screen, but uh, as of May 4th today, Signs are actually pointing to good news with ships no longer waiting to dock. Okay. However, the ships that are on the water and are docking are at capacity, meaning they are full to the brim. So there is no more space on the ship. There's no more space on the ship, which is causing a further delay. Yep. So people are having to wait in line. Okay. And this is also causing a supply and demand thing overseas. So now we've got certain people that are like, well, how much does it cost me to get on that boat? And they say, well, it's full. And they said, but I can knock this guy's container off for $25,000. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of like some shenanigans, like some pirate stuff going on. Wow. And that's out of everyone's control. Yeah. I mean, that's not anyone's individual control. That's just happening. Yeah. But even with the ships at capacity, we are still 1.5 times the shipping levels pre COVID. That means even though it's slowed down, we're still one and a half times greater wow. than we were pre-COVID. So not double. Not double. But, but almost double. But we're about to be double. Because oh. as these, we're going to get into this in a minute, component okay. shortages, as the component shortages fix themselves, uh-huh. lots of importers are expecting a shipping tsunami. Oh, wow. Meaning as they're able to catch up to production, there's going to be a lot more stuff coming in the ports. So, the, so you're saying if I'm if I'm following what you're reiterating from the article is once, once the uh, floodgates are released, there will just be just a flood of so much product. Mm -hmm. 
So that could last into 2022 and beyond. Okay. It just depends how much us consumers want to purchase. So interesting. Obviously, we're buying a lot of stuff, but the consumer purchasing has been through the roof. Right. Through the pandemic, people are buying computers, laptops, yep. game consoles, smart devices, anything to be connected to the outside world yep. from being inside. So, I, you know, you saying that, I remember listening to uh, a podcast. Um, it's on Spotify. It's called, I think, oh, Snacks. Oh, snacks. Robin Hood Snacks? Yeah, Robin Hood oh, yeah, Snacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were talking about. It's a good podcast. Um, they were talking about this and they were saying that actually during the pandemic and during, you know, the lockdown spending on people spent more money on fixing their homes and making their homes nicer. Look at the price of wood right now. If you get hit by a two by four on the interstate, it'll be better to total your car and sell the the two by four (laughs) than it would to just file an insurance claim. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Um, but he's right. Like, so consumer spending has been through the roof. Mm -hmm. Um, another bullet point here. The consumer spending is also causing issues with supply chain locally. So that means from the local warehouse to your residence. Yeah. So that's been like severely compacted. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all the weather delays we just had in Florida. Like the deep freeze, I mean, Florida, (laughs) Texas. The deep freeze in Texas. Yep. By the way, if Florida ever freezes, Something's we up. got a real problem, <laughs> but like you know, Texas froze over. But like people lost power, people lost their homes. Texas it's, got it hit. was bad. The Northeast got hit. I mean, us here in Middle Tennessee, we were we shut down for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I personally was snowed in my house for seven days, which mm-hmm. that's yeah, we, that don't happen down here. Because the problem here, it's not just snow; it's ice. Yeah, we don't prepare for ice, so mm. the ice is a problem. So all all this to say, all these small factors snowball no pun intended, Mm -hmm. into a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we are with shipping. But it's looking like it's going to improve. They're forecasting middle to late of 2022. By by being able to have enough product on hand. Uh, On hand. No, I mean, really, just just to be able to get the... The shipping chain back to somewhat normal. They're oh, building. They're building okay. new ports. They're building new boats. They're they're yeah. you know changing the way they put containers on boats and right. how they put containers on. Like they're they're changing everything. Yeah. Like they're experimenting with new rural routes hmm. and like delivery windows. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure a lot of you that have used Amazon, you notice that you'll get an Amazon delivery at 10:40 p.m. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're they're experimenting with all this new stuff to hmm. try to like kind of ease up on that. Um. So let's talk about the next thing. Okay, let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about uh, components. Yeah, the components this is a hot stuff. topic. Why does that matter? I guess is the first question. So, everything we use on a daily basis, from phones to watches, televisions, remotes, v- vehicles, vehicles, all use semiconductors, and they use a lot of them. Yeah, and it's not just AV gear; it's literally everything. Yeah. Even to the like, you know, robots making cars, mm-hmm. the UPC scanners at food supply companies, everything uses these things, and there's a huge demand for them. So right components now. are literally just the little widgets that make up something. So to your point, it's it's not just this this component shortage is not just uh, a finished I, good. It's not just a finished good, yeah. but it's also not just isolated to the technical space because I know that we're having food chain issues. Mm-hmm. I mean, chicken wings are crazy expensive, (laughs) like crazy expensive. I have a friend. Stock market? Chicken wing market. I got a friend that's in the meat business, or he's in the food supply business, and uh, and he was telling me that chicken wings are at an all-time high right now, that uh, pre-COVID you could get a case of chicken wings for like 80 bucks, and now it's knocking around $200 for a case of chicken wings. And the problem is getting access to the chicken wing, so... Yeah, I'm sure we'll get into this other stuff yeah. as well. So. It's a problem. And, um, and you know, also when we say semiconductors, we're not just talking about the actual chips. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the tiny little minute, tiny little chips on the chips. Mm. So, I mean, we're talking about something the smaller of a ballpoint pen, the tip oh, of a wow. ball, ballpoint pen. Wow. And they're having trouble getting all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, why, why is that? The demand. Like, we, we put chips in so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Everything's connected to the internet. Mm-hmm. Everyone in here has an. Oh, sorry if I just triggered your. 
Um, but everyone, everyone in here has a smart device that you say a name and yeah. it lights up and it does whatever you say. Um, and those are just through the roof. And not to mention the cars. Cars use more semiconductors than almost anything. Because you yeah. got to think there's a microprocessor for the analog brakes. There's a microprocessor for your HVAC, your radio. Then there's a super advanced microprocessor for your airbags. Because mm. that's got to be like super secure. You don't yeah. want to just get shot in the face with an right. airbag while you're driving. So more cars were sold during the pandemic yeah. than they could have ever thought of. Yeah, I remember hearing something. I don't, rem- I don't know the details. But the gist was, I remember uh, not long after Biden got actually into office that there was some uh, there was some stuff that he was working on trying to get more semiconductors allocated to, I believe, U.S. based car manufacturers. Yeah, thirty seven billion worth. Yeah, because it's guys, it's a problem. Clearly, it's a problem, um, but it won't be a problem for forever. Hopefully, yeah. Right now, we, we just can't make them fast enough. I am we, the chip ma- makers. Um, oh, yeah. That's a, okay. To that point, another issue why we have component shortages, specifically in the electronic space, is some of these semiconductor producers, like there was, uh, is it ATK or AK? A- oh, God. There's, uh, a, there's a Japanese manufacturer that. Yeah, call their, fire. Their facility burned to the ground. I mean, mm-hmm. they couldn't help that, right? Yeah. No, I mean, it was. No one knows really what happened, but that was a that was a big problem. That was a and big that, problem. And so when when that happened, there's another article I have here that I'm gonna put up that uh, when the factory fire happened, mm-hmm. that caused all the other factories to pause and reevaluate their safety standards. Oh wow! Which therefore pushed back more delayed stuff. it even more. So yeah. it was just delays upon delays upon delays. Um, but it's the simple fact is they just can't make them fast enough. Mm-hmm. Um, cer- certain manufacturers like Intel here and TSMC, which is Taiwan mm-hmm. Semiconductor. Um, they're actually in the process of building new factories, which is great. It's great, but it, that costs time. it costs billions with a B to make these new factories. It takes a long time to make them, and on top of that, when the factory's done and made, it'll probably take a year for testing and yep. calibration and everything quality like that. Check, quality, so, quality control. Yeah, so all that stuff takes time. So they're forecasting uh, by twenty twenty three, everything should be at eighty percent of where it was pre COVID. So we're like. That's two years from now, and it's still not going to be... To be at 80%. To be at 80%. Wow, Um, that's crazy. But they're trying to pull a lot of this back to the U.S. because currently there is only one chip manufacturer in the United States, and that's Intel, and it's in Arizona, I believe, Arizona or Texas. Um, But 75% of the chips come from Asia, so it'll be the Asian manufacturing that will be bumping this up. Uh Probably we'll see things like Samsung is a chip maker. Yep. Like probably I'd, I'd wager to say... 40 to 50 percent of Samsung's actual revenue comes from making chips. Oh, wow. That don't even really say Samsung on them. They're just I had a no idea. They're a wafer maker. That's, you know, that's what they do. So it's really Samsung, Intel, TSMC, and like a handful of others. Yeah. Um, so but, that's good that there'll be hopefully more manufacturing there in will the States, be. which will definitely yeah. aid in, in the supply chain if we can get the components here for them to manufacture. That's the, components. the biggest thing. But the good news is with the big three or four, and there's still a handful of other like smaller, we'll call them mom and pop chip makers. There's definitely not mom and pop. Mm-hmm. But what's happening now is manufacturers, say ABC manufacturer, doesn't have the semiconductor to make this component. They'll do what's, I'm going to make sure I get it right, going to spot markets, okay. which basically that means they're saying ABC manufacturer cannot get chips from uh, manufacturer Z. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we need this chip made and we're going to put it out to bid. And they're going to receive bids to see who can make a chip just like this. For the lowest price. For the lowest price. <laughs> yeah. And other things considered. But So that's that's happening right now. Okay. So there's another wave in the sector where, like, instead of being able to get it from here, they're just like, anyone who can make this, here's let an, us know here's how much an, it costs. Oh, yeah, here's an open order, I we, guess. Yeah, we need it. And what sucks is they know they need it, so they're going to hit them yeah, hard. Yeah, they are. They're going to charge so, them through the nose. In the short term, you know... While we're waiting on components, the the component issue to go away or to or to diminish, what options do we have, you know, for the next, I don't know, six, six, nine, twelve months? Yeah. You know? So that's been a that's been a hot topic. So what can we do? Um, the biggest popular question is is there B stock? Um, some manufacturers we work with, 
do have and sell B stock, mm-hmm. uh, different levels of B stock, and some manufacturers we work with uh, do not do B stock. Yep. Um, B stock is sold on a first in first out basis. Yep. So there's, there's still no rushing. It's just you know if we have it, we get it. Sometimes we have one or two, mm-hmm. and by the time we get the reports on B stock, sometimes those things are already gone. Yeah. You know, yeah. From a request that came in late yesterday afternoon or something like that. So we'd like the. It's just so hard to guarantee that stuff because it's so fluid. So there is some B stock. The key word is some. Some, yeah. Not large amounts. No. Nope. Small amounts. Um, and they're not necessarily always regionally located. Yeah. Right? I mean, we might have, again, we're in the southeast, but there might be B stock that lives in the Dakotas. And yeah. We used to have double digit B stock inventory at one point. <clears throat> now we don't. Yeah. So, um, I mean, something else that can help too is like a lot of manufacturer reps do have demo inventory. Yeah. And we are 100% more than willing to lend a hand where if we need to supplement, you know, a piece of equipment to get you through a job until yours comes in, if we have it, by yeah, all if means. Yeah, if we can afford to let it go, like if we don't have, obli- you know, obligations yeah. with it or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would, we, we I would a, say we're partners, right? So, as your partner, we want to help you out when and where we can. Exactly. But we don't have time. We don't have tons of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we don't. Either. We don't have a warehouse full of stuff. Um, but I mean, we've got stuff out right now that has been out for a few weeks. Yeah. And uh, we're helping people out with it right now. So that's that's good. So let yeah. me ask you this, Kevin what 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 would be something that we would recommend or encourage people to do while dealing with this mess? Because it's what it is. It's just a mess, and it's. It's not a mess that people aren't actively trying to figure out how to clean it up. Mm-hmm. And it's no one's fault. It's, it's just, no one's fault, yeah. right? So just as a reminder, you know, we're all, me included, when I try to get something and I want to buy something. Yeah, I'm waiting on stuff right now. Don't don't be mad at the people you're talking to because it's not like it's their fault <laughs> that we're well, in the situation. I mean, that's that kind of our in. first thing. It's like, you know, like I'm waiting on something right now. It's like a, like a T-shirt. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, when am I going to get this? Yeah. And I have to remind myself, like, the clothing industry is having problems. Yeah. Everyone's having problems. Everybody's having problems. We just ordered some shirts the other day yep. for an event this weekend, and they're having trouble getting ink. We had to change to a different T-shirt because they can't get those T-shirts. They, like, it's everything. Yeah. It's not just electronics. So what can we do? Yeah, what can we do? What can we do? So I made some notes here. So if you're in the AV space, the best thing you can do is if, if your manufacturer uses reps Captive or manufacturer reps, stay in contact with them. Let them know what you have in the pipeline. So that's going to do. It's going to do one of two things. It's going to help them to make sure that you get your stuff more in advance. Mm-hmm. So with you planning in advance, it's better to order it before you need it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not doing this as a scare tactic. I'm just saying it's better to order it before you need it mm-hmm. than to need it and then have to order it and then it get delayed because yeah. we're seeing that a lot right now. Because that's happening. You're right. Yeah, but if if you can let people like us know or your reps know what you have going on, they can go in and help put that in their pipeline, which goes straight to the demand planning in most cases yep. to the manufacturers. And that helps them draw a roadmap of where th- trends are going and what to order and when to get it in. Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest help. Demand planning, letting those people know, like those men and women have a tough job of mm-hmm. predicting what's going to be hot in six months. Mm. I, I don't I don't know how they do it, but I know it's tough. They're a lot smarter than me. Yeah. So I guess what makes sense is, and this is gonna be weird, but like you we really gotta have good communication mm-hmm. between all parties involved. So that way we can make sure that we can get you your products when you need it. And all that for us to be able to get the product that you need, it starts like way back here in time. So as soon as you know something as soon as you have a commitment or you're under contract or, or you, you think you, or you think you or you do. think you're going to yeah. get under contract like don't like just in time that stuff don't work no more Mm-mm. it just doesn't work right now because we have major issues so the best thing to do is say hey i got a project it's what is today may 4th May the 4th be with you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I left my helmet in the car. So it's May 4th, right? And I got a project that I got to close in September. But I got the order today. Mm-hmm. 
man, I'd, I'd say go on ahead and put that order in and say, I need it in September, right? I need it in September. And then we will go figure out with our manufacturer partners how to get you your products by that deadline. And stuff might ship, you know, it might ship in 30 days from now, and stuff might not ship for 60 days or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the point is you'll have the product that you need on hand to pull off the project that you have. Oh, yeah. And if you don't have the warehouse space to do it? There's the other. There's we, can, out, we can walk that path with yeah, you. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of creative ways on how you can make sure that you, you can get what you got to get, but you got to start now. Mm-hmm. Before it's too late, you know. Yeah. The other thing to, is that's really important is also informing your customers of the delays. Oh yes. Just be upfront with them. Um, I know everyone has deadlines. We have deadlines. You have deadlines. Your customers have deadlines. Their customers have deadlines. Managing expectations is a big part of this. Yep. Um, and the only way to do that, like Trey said earlier, is just communication, constant communication with them, letting them know upfront, hey, this is going to be a wait, you know, because yeah. Somewhere, somehow, someone's going to get angry that they can't get their product. But if we keep that communication wide and open, we let them know what's going on, hopefully we can mitigate it and really just like manage the expectations. Maybe when you submit a proposal or a quote to your customer, mm-hmm. put a note on there and just say, you know, shipping yeah, shipping issues, component issues, all the above. That's a really good point because I, I would encourage you, because I have to encourage, you know, my customers of this to encourage their customers to say, look, I, if you want to get this project done in this time frame, you have to make a decision way sooner than later because I can't make any promises that I can get you your stuff when you want it by. I mean, it's it's a vicious cycle, but that's the only way we're going to get through this is if we're able to communicate. Mm-hmm. And, we'll and, and, I'm, and I'm not going to say deliver bad news. I'm going to say maybe be willing to deliver some unfortunate news because unfortune can turn to fortune sometimes. At least that's what my kids told me sometime. Yeah, they're probably know. smart. Yeah. They're definitely smart. So all that to say, we just kind of wanted to, you know, this is all public knowledge. You know, pretty much if you own a TV, you understand that this has all been an issue for over a year now. Yep. And it's still... It's getting better. We're not out of the woods yet. I mean, go try to buy, go try to buy a laptop right now. It's tough. You're not going to get the one you want. Go try to buy a TV right now. You're not going to get the one you want. Go try to get ribs for July Fourth. Yeah. So <laughs> on that note, you're not going to get them. Nice little nugget right here. If the, if you guys listen and take anything away from this, maybe just take this away from it. Yeah. If you plan on smoking some ribs or doing anything like that for the Fourth of July, get on it now because. Again, the supply chain issue is not just, uh, not just isolated to the technical space and the technology space or the electronic space. It is with the food that we eat. And, again, I was talking to my friend Adam, and, and he was saying that the issue that they have is the farmers can't get the corn to feed the animals. So the breakdown is the farmers can't get the corn to feed the animals. When, they actually, when the animals are grown, there's not enough personnel to process them. I mean, that's a problem yeah. right there. I didn't so even think then, about that. When you told me that earlier, it was just like just thinking about feeding the animals. Yeah, you can't get the food to feed so the animals. So that we can, yeah. Um, places like chicken joints are shutting down because they can't get chicken wings. They can't get chicken wings, so they got to convert to chicken tenders. By the way, last time I checked, a chicken wing and a chicken tender still comes from a chicken. Yeah. So at least they're creative by trying to provide another product but yeah. the product is still coming from the same source so but, i mean places like buffalo wild wings like you pretty much know what's up when you go in the door like yeah. you know they got wings and they can't pivot to burgers look what happened to ihop mm, uh, nobody uh, cared about international house of burgers yeah i didn't even get by there when they did that thing that was good marketing though <laughs> that was good so anyways yeah the long and short of it is guys it, this supply chain stuff it, it it is a real issue it is a real issue uh, it's not an issue to be scared of. It's not an issue to be fearful of. It's an issue to understand that there is some adversity and we got to face it head on. And let's work together on how we can get through this adversity together. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope I hope that this has been of some sort of benefit. Yeah, me too. We'll be doing more of these. Like, you know, we we built this studio here, um, you know, using a lot of the products that we um, we represent mm-hmm. and uh, just really trying to bring some other people in and show them how easy this stuff is. And then, you know, we're going to start doing these TKO. Yeah. Trey Kevin. 
O. Online. On, thank you, online. But technical knockout and just kind of just hitting stuff from a high level, maybe 30,000 foot view, yeah. swooping down to 10,000 and right back up. Yep. So uh, if you have anything you want us to address, like, you know, shoot us a message, hello at coremediasource.com. Yeah. And um, we'll make sure to do this. And we'll, we'll be doing these live in a couple of weeks. We're waiting on parts. We've been go, waiting on parts. Go figure. We're waiting on a second camera. We're waiting on a couple, you know, control pieces. So yeah. we're in this with you. We're waiting on stuff. So just keep keep an eye out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Be cool. See you. Be cool. I've got appreciation for your love.